Hello and welcome to Multiframe Webinar 2, Video 2 on Working with Properties. We've seen how we can apply restraints and springs at joints in our frame. Now let's take a look at a slightly more advanced topic, which is master-slave or joint linking in multiframe terminology. This is a technique where when we have a series of joints which lie in a common plane, for example, the joints around a floor slab, then we can connect those nodes together to simulate a rigid body diaphragm between those joints. The technique that we use to do that is to link together the rotational degree of freedom of the surface normal of that diaphragm. So in this case, when we're looking at these joints, we're talking about a floor slab. That means the surface normal of that floor slab is a vertical axis going upwards, and uh, when those nodes in that floor slab move together, they have a common rotation about that vertical axis. As well as allowing us to simulate the structural rigidity of that floor slab, it also has the advantage that when we're doing a dynamic analysis, it does provide some efficiencies in the stiffness matrix formulation because the master node at uh, one corner of that group is included in the stiffness matrix and all of the other nodes are eliminated so we actually reduce the amount of memory usage and improve the solution time. So let's move over to multiframe and see how these nodes work in practice when we link them together. So we're going to start out with our 2D frame and in order to uh, look at this problem we need to work in 3D so I'm just going to make a quick copy of this frame in 3D. So I'll duplicate the frame in the third dimension and I'll extrude some members between the frame. And we don't really need those uh, members at ground level so we'll get rid of them. And so what we have here is a ground floor floor slab and so I can select all of the members which lie in the plane of that floor. Then from the frame menu I can choose joint linking. Because all of those members are lie in a horizontal plane, when I add my joint linking, we can choose which degrees of freedom lie to get, uh, together and are linked together. And so in this case, the common characteristic of all of those joints is that the rotation about a vertical axis, the theta y, is linked together. So that's ticked here in this dialog. Notice that the x and z displacements are also ticked but they're greyed out. That's because they're not constrained to be the same but they are geometrically constrained to follow the displacement defined by the theta y rotation. So remembering y is our vertical axis so as that rigid floor slab rotates about a vertical axis the horizontal x and z displacements rotate along with it. And so when we click OK that creates a rigid body group or a master slave group and notice that one node is chosen as the master it's got a little dot associated with it that uh, serves as the master for the other slave members to follow. If we choose another part of the frame for example perhaps we have a rigid shear wall here we can use the same command however there is a constraint that if we have master slave groups that share a common node then it's actually a requirement that that, that, um, that common node is the master node. So we notice in the middle of this dialog there's a drop down list that shows the nodes we've selected and one of those nodes it has to be the master. Now normally the selection of the master is pretty arbitrary but in the case where we have multiple groups intersecting then a common node needs to be the master. So let's take a look at which node that might be. Uh, we can see that's node 5 there at the moment. Node 2 is the master for that one. So when we turn on our joint linking, node, mo, node 5 is our master. Also this plane uh, of linked joints is vertical. So we want to use theta x as our constraining degree of freedom. That means uh, they're rigidly connected so that the theta x rotation is constant and the vertical y and uh, transverse z rotations uh, displacements are going to be dependent on that theta x. So the final change then is to double click on the other master slave group and make the master node the same so that they both share a common master node. 
So now when we carry out an analysis, the theta y rotations of all of those horizontal nodes will be the same. They'll be rigidly linked in the transverse plane and the theta x rotations of these four nodes will be the same and they'll be rigidly linked in the y z plane. So that concludes the setup of our master slave model. Thank you for watching.